All right, guys, in this video, we want to talk about a few of the big products that are currently coming out and that are being rumored in the photography industry. There's a lot going on, and I feel like in many industries, we're right on the brink of like this tipping point where the technology is about to completely change. Let's go ahead and jump into it. I don't really know where to begin. There's a few different products that I want to talk about, but let's start with the Sony A9 II. If you guys aren't familiar with this, and I'll also explain this for Patrick because he has no idea about this camera, Sony's A9 is their sports camera, but what Sony was able to do was they were able to make a camera sensor that was so fast that it could actually be used as a real life sports camera without a shutter. Now I've explained now, this, this is before. a full frame camera. It's a full frame camera. I know it does like 20 frames per second, right? Yeah, it can do 20 frames per second without a shutter and it has no blackout in the digital viewfinder. And uh, a lot of people are probably not really understanding why that even matters. I loved it, I loved it. Now I couldn't justify buying it for myself. If I was a wedding photographer still, I probably would have bought one. Because you took one. this to Europe and then also in a helicopter and like you you did a lot of work with that. A9. Yeah, I, I, I played with it a lot and I just left the camera in silent <laughs> shooting mode forever and the photos looked amazing and nothing's moving, nothing's making sound. It's awesome and it's it's way faster at shooting. So when all these rumors started coming out about the Sony A9 II, I was really excited. Even if I'm not going to buy the Sony A9 II, I'm just excited about the technology. I'm excited about it pushing the photography industry forward. You know, my holy grail of photography is yes. the global shutter. When they figure that out one day and we can get rid of shutters and mirrors completely and there's no moving parts, that's going to change photography completely. We're not quite there, but I feel like Sony's the closest. And so all these rumors were coming out like it's gonna have a better sensor. It's gonna be better in low light. It's gonna be better with video. Yep. Well, Sony just announced the Sony A9 II and it was the lamest promo video ever. You probably haven't even seen it, have you? I just looked up some of the updates and the first update was something so boring that I thought this list is not going to be exciting. Well, I'm talking about the promo video. You know, oh, usually no, no, no. when these companies release these videos on YouTube, it's like, it's awesome, it's here, check it out, and this camera's spinning around and it's showing all this amazing stuff. It was like, it looked like, you know, some promo from 15 years ago about a camera. It was just awful. And it may as well have just been the Sony A9. They've only upgraded a couple things. So like now the mechanical shutter is a little better. So instead of five frames per second, it can shoot 10 frames per second with the shutter. The dust proof and weather ceiling is like a little the better. five axis was a little bit better. It's a little so better. Stop more of. They're claiming the autofocus is a little better, but it was already like amazing autofocus. So it's kind of hard to imagine it being better. So basically this huge update, this new camera that was supposed to be the holy grail of cameras didn't come out. And this is just a very small upgrade. Now, photographer Sony shooter should be excited by this because you can get the Sony A9 now for 3,500 bucks. And I guarantee you this holiday season, it's dropping to 3,000. I guarantee yeah. you that's gonna happen. Well, let me ask you this question, because you had the A9 for a couple weeks. You've actually bought the A7R3? I own the A7 III. And it's funny, because the last time we made a video about the Nikon D6, everybody was calling us Sony fanboys. I don't think you've ever once picked a camera up. No. I own one camera. I can hardly remember the, the, <laughs> the model number of the camera. But you, the point is, is, you own the Sony. Yeah. So you're kind of already in that system. I still like to shoot with Nikon. What yeah. prevented you from getting the A9 to begin with? It was just 4,500 bucks, and I just felt like I would be paying this huge premium. For a sports camera For this sports camera with lower megapixels and like crazy frames per second. I never shoot And what's the megapixels high frames per second. Camera? Like 12 I think or? it's around 25. Oh, well, that's still pretty high. It's pretty high. It's not, it's not horrible, but you know, it's not the 50 that all the other cameras are now. And so I just thought like, ah, for 4,500, if it was 3,000, I would have bought it. And that's what I'm excited about now, the Sony A9, which is almost just as good as the A9 II. I guarantee you, it's gonna be 3,000 bucks so in a couple months. One up? Probably not, no. probably not. I think, I think I'm gonna wait until like the next iteration. I'm still waiting, and I think you're waiting too, for the 
Sony A7S III? Is that the one that never I've came out? I've heard rumors, and we're talking about rumors, that yeah. that camera's never coming out. Well, obviously. I mean, they've skipped over it twice now or something. It should have come out years ago. But the new rumor that has now come out is about Sony's new cinema camera, and they're saying that the sensor from that camera might actually be coming to the Sony A9S, or whatever they happen to call this next video-centric right. DSLR or mirrorless SLR, whatever they call it. So this camera is called the FX9. It's 11,000 bucks, and I know the majority of people watching this are not cinematographers that have $11,000 to spend on a camera, but when you check this camera out, this thing is really exciting if you shoot video at all. The basic premise here is that most Casual video shooters like us appreciate autofocus. So we shoot on the GH5. All three of these cameras right here are the GH5, but the autofocus is horrific. Continuous autofocus. Real time, yes. Yeah, it's fine to like lock your shot, but in terms of continuous autofocus, completely unreliable. So people love Sony and Canon cameras because they leave continuous autofocus on all the time. It locks onto your eye. It's amazing. And it pulls naturally. Like it looks yeah, really smooth. It looks really good. But professionals don't like that. They say it's not reliable enough, it's not smooth enough, um, you know, it's not gonna be as good of, as a focus puller. But check out this new Sony camera. So the basic premise here is Sony's making a cinema camera with new cinema glass that also has autofocus. I don't know of any cinema glass that has this as an option. Right now, yep. if you spend a hundred grand on a couple of cinema lenses. They're all geared and they have, that's all manual focus. All manual focus. You have to set up your own wireless follow focus system. You have to have a separate autofocus puller who's you know charging thousands of dollars a day just yep. to make sure everything's in focus. So the concept that Sony's coming up with here is they're saying our autofocus is now better than a human, but for all you professionals out there who still don't like it, we're gonna give you the option. We're gonna sell you cinema glass. It's gonna be just as good as anything else that's out there. You can use it manual or flick a switch and now it's going to have autofocus. And I think it's gonna be, I think this camera's gonna be huge. I mean, it's gonna completely take over the, the documentary or that run and gun style It could definitely shooting. be big among videographers that are kind of coming up. I still think there's gonna be a huge resistance in the industry. I, oh, of course there is. But ironically, if you watch, somebody was saying that they've digitized Seinfeld now to like 4K. You watch some of these older shows, I know they're 20 years old now, but how many times do they miss focus? I mean, yeah. having that human element in there, even though it's more artistic and you might have reasons to pull slower or faster, you're going to get it wrong at some point. Yeah. And the idea of that being automated, at least for the next breed of videographers who want to rely on that technology, it's pretty exciting. Yeah, I just like having the option. So some people are saying that this new 6K sensor that's in this camera, it's full frame. Will make its way. Will make its way down to a smaller little handheld camera. I mean, that would be so awesome. And that camera, that camera I would spend thousands of dollars on. Would I spend 4,500 on it? I don't know. Like we, there's so many features on the GH5 that, that we're accustomed know. to now. Yeah. That it's like when other cameras don't have. It. The other day I was shooting something on the Sony A7 III that we have, and I forgot that it shuts off after 30 minutes. So I'm sitting here talking to a, a camera that's not even recording, and then I go back and check it, and I'm like, Oh, I have One to do One of our buddies, that. Nick, he's got all Sony. He complains that the camera shuts down in the heat. He's like, if you leave it out and sunlight hits it, and he's in South Carolina, you yeah. know. He's like, the Sony just stops working, it shuts down. So, I mean, we did that test years ago on some of the original right. Sony mirrorless cameras that were coming out, and that was a the massive problem. The first 4K problem. cameras. Yeah. yeah, they were all shutting down, yeah. like, in just a few minutes. They've gotten exponentially better, but we've never had an issue with the GH5, never. They're awesome. What I think's interesting about some of the new cameras that are coming out is the features that suddenly now matter. And it's things like, dual stabilization in the sensor and in the lens. Mm -hmm. And it is the ability to shoot forever, or it's the eye focus that can continuously focus. For me, and maybe I'm gonna be the cynical one here, I feel like there's nothing more that I need out of a stills camera. Yeah, I feel like 50 megapixels is plenty. 20 frames per second, oh my gosh, if I shot weddings, I'd probably limit that to 10. Because I mean, it's too And even much. that, did you ever shoot with your finger on the trigger like I never once shot rapid no, fire but if I ever. did like I just know how many frames 20 frames a second is and how much more time that adds to your workflow yeah. that there's so many like dynamic range and what you can do in raw files like at some point 
I tell photographers, it really comes down to your creativity. It's what are you doing to build your set and to come up with your ideas. It's not the limitation of the camera. And so for me, I am not that excited anymore about cameras in general because they're all so freaking good. Yeah, so you're specifically talking about still photography. Yes. And still cameras. I think there are huge advancements still happening in, in video, video cameras. World, right. And I mean, you know, you were excited to get the new iPhone, not because it's great at taking still photos, which it is. Yep but because of what it can do on the video front. So, well, I mean, let's talk about that a little bit because the uh, iPhone 11 Pro just came out. You've been playing with that for a while. Yep, I have it right here with me at all times. Okay, GoPro has just announced their GoPro Hero 8, which I'm pretty excited about. I was telling you about it the other day. You didn't seem that excited about it. And you were like, ah, I'd just rather use my phone for vlogging stuff. The idea of carrying something that's like a square little box on you at all times and the biggest thing I want to see from GoPro, maybe it is resolved now, but it's the battery life. Yeah. I feel like I was changing batteries on GoPros like all the time. Every time I pick that camera up, it's never ready to go. Yeah. Where my phone, I know the battery life on this thing at <laughs> every minute. You're, you're looking right. at it nonstop anyway. And so I just recently took this into the pool, and I know that's probably something I'm not going to do too often, but I feel like the footage from this thing looks so nice. And another feature that a lot of cameras, I think, should start implementing in their, their systems is the kind of the AI processing. And I know a lot of photographers say, oh, I hate that, I want to turn it off. But when I see the video and the photos coming out of this phone, straight out of it being processed, the dynamic range and the color, everything looks incredible. Yeah. Whereas Sometimes I want to edit a raw file and make it look like that, but in other cases, it's like I want my video to look as good as possible in the file, ready to go. I'm not going to sit there and color grade. Especially for casual 50 stuff like of my vlogging. Right. You just want it to look good. You don't want to, you know, you're not filming a movie here. You just want it to be simple. So when and I see easy. the stabilization, when I see the dynamic range, when I see the coloring and the sharpening, it would be nice if almost all of our cameras had a feature where you could just quickly turn that on and suddenly now you have footage that's pretty much ready to go. Oh, I see what you're saying. So you're saying our more professional video cameras, if the GH5 had an ability for like a high dynamic range smart setting that wasn't just flat, yeah. but it actually looked good. Because I right have to out believe the, the processors in these cameras are way better than the processors in here, but you maybe would think, they're but not. maybe not. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't quite know how all that. I works. was trying to do a test where I took the iPhone out and compared it to our GH5, and in almost every case, I was like the footage off the iPhone looks better. Really? It did. Why didn't you ever release that video? We need to do that video. Because it's a night, I don't know. I just, I hate getting the files off this thing and it was hard. <laughs> okay, so, so that's a reason not to use the phone right there. What it is, I wish, you I could just, about? I wish I could just plug my phone in and then just drag the files off, but. It's well that, okay, so that's one reason why I'm excited for the new GoPro, but I think the main reason why I'm excited for the new GoPro is they have this new little case that you can buy. I think it's 80 bucks. And it adds on all these additional features, including a little mini shotgun mic. And the issue that I have with the iPhone and with really any vlogging camera is when you get out in wind, yep. the audio starts sounding really bad. I think the iPhone mic sounds great when there's no wind. Yeah. But when there is wind, it just wrecks the whole footage and in many cases we're filming vlog video stuff when we're with Alaya on these photographing the world trips and it's always raining and storming and windy and I feel like that's when we want to film most and that's when the audio sounds the worst. Yep. So I'm very excited to test out this little microphone. But the just because it's a shotgun mic that doesn't eliminate, does it have a built-in windscreen and everything or is it just a narrow beam that isn't capturing all? Well that, yeah, so that's the question. So right now the GoPro 8 is kind of out. They've, they've shipped it out to a lot of people. GoPro, if you're watching, you should be sending it to us as well. But they didn't send it to us, but I've been watching reviews. The footage looks amazing. It's got crazy stabilization that's way better than the iPhone. It's basically like a gimbal built into yep. this thing. Yep. But the thing that I'm excited about, this little, this little camera case that has the mic on it, doesn't come out for a few more months. So part of me is like, oh, I'm just going to go ahead and buy the GoPro and just have it ready for when this case comes out. But I don't want to get scammed into buying this camera. And then the mic sucks too, and I just go back to using it. And I assume phone. it's not waterproof, uh, the mic itself. I don't know. I don't know if it is or Seems not. It's hard to get a really good 
it, mic sound with a waterproof casing. But, yeah, but, but that's you know, kind of what GoPros built their whole brand around. That's is. true, and you know, you'd never need to use audio under the water anyway. So I'm not worried about it. Like if I have to take that little mic off before I no, but go I can the water, see where if you're filming in water areas or the oh, park, you like would want the good audio, something? but then you just want to jump in the pool or be in the ocean. But then you want to go back to filming. Like this is something you have to take off and put mm. in a locker. That's kind of the pain. Is you yeah. either want a waterproof camera or you want a vlogging camera. You want them both. Yeah, but you want them you're both. You're forced to choose between the two. <laughs> and that's kind of what the iPhone is. You know, it's yeah. like it can do everything. It is waterproof now. I wouldn't take it in the ocean because it's so expensive. But uh, yeah, so a lot to think about there. We'll definitely be getting uh, the GoPro 8 once the mic comes out to review. So stay tuned for that. But going back to the Sony, it was kind of a letdown. I feel like this kind of opens the door for Nikon and the Nikon D6. Now, what's... The D6 or their mirrorless Z series? Well, I'm talking about the D6 because that's going to be like their the big camera pinnacle out. sports camera that's supposed to be coming out any day now. You see they just dropped the price on the D5? They did, so a thousand coming. bucks. I still feel like, you know... How many people are really buying that camera? It's so it's so expensive and so specialized. It's just for like sports shooters. A lot of the rumors, I, I just went back through and I was reading a lot of the D6 rumors and people were saying like, maybe it's gonna have the same new sensor that the Sony A9 II has. It's gonna be 36 megapixels. And then we learned that the Sony A9 II doesn't, doesn't even have, it. have that sensor. So I'm afraid that the D6 is just going to be a incremental upgrade from the D5. It's going to be the last of the expensive sports DSLRs, and then everyone's going to be moving to mirrorless after that. But if you're a sports shooter, you do photojournalism and you know war-torn countries and all that sort of stuff. Like you're still probably going to get the D6. I know a lot of people hated our D6 video. They said I'm still going to buy, and you guys just don't know. But the percentage, there was like two people who said the percentage that. of people that need that camera is so small. Right. And when you start looking at these other cameras that can do autofocus as well, or maybe better, and can shoot. 20 frames a second with no blackout. Yeah. You can literally just watch the performer in your frame and not have to worry about it. You're I know. losing track. I mean, because when you shoot, I don't know that a camera shoots 20 frames per second. Maybe like 12 is the max. I'm not sure. 12 frames a second with a shutter and mirror. I mean, it's half the time you're not seeing anything. Right. It's very difficult to it's actually It's very track. difficult to use that. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that's why I feel like the Sony A9 was like a huge game changer for sports photographers especially, but uh, the A9 II, it's better. It's just not, it's not what I dreamed it would be. Mm -hmm. Quickly, I want to talk about Apple because uh, Apple's got a few things of coming out. You now, you say that like I'm an Apple fanboy. They believe you to be. <laughs> Dude, you guys on YouTube and on F-Stoppers, people on F-Stoppers, it's funny. I've been, I've been just banning some of the really negative people on YouTube, and for the most part, our YouTube comments have gotten pretty pleasant. Yeah. Now all the trolls have gone over to F-Stoppers. I'm gonna have to start banning people there as well. Uh, if you don't like what we have to say about something, it doesn't mean that we're a fanboy or, or we're shill paid. or yeah, everything's Apple's sponsored. Paying, I mean, I just paid a ton of money for this phone. I, <laughs> I wish know. Apple was sponsoring us. I know, I know, um, but I, I'm not a huge Apple fan. I love my iPhone, I love my iPad. Um, I do own a MacBook, the old one. We bought the old one because I can't stand the dongles. I hate it. I hate it. I like to have a laptop that I can plug anything in on. Um, but we use that like at once every blue moon. Yeah, I, I probably use it a couple times a year. I just tried to use it yesterday. I've got a secret product here um, that uh, I think will be announced in about a month. And I was trying to film something with the MacBook using this new product. It was a nightmare. I'm not gonna get into that <laughs> right now. We'll talk about that later. But basically, like, I do keep my eye on what Apple's doing because- They are a leader in the industry. Yeah, and a lot of their products are amazing. I love the design and a lot of their ideas trickle down into other products like Windows machines that we use most of the time. Yep. So the new MacBook Pros, people are saying, you know, it's gonna have a 16 inch screen now. Basically, it's gonna be the same size as 15 inch, just less bezel. That should have happened a long time ago though, right? I mean, we've been using XPS 15, the Dell laptops, with an incredible, very small bezel screen right. forever. Um, people have been waiting for the Macs to do with the touch screen. Macs still can't do that. No, I don't, I don't think they're going to. I, I think, I'm hoping, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that Apple can figure out a way to merge 
the iPad and the Mac Book operating Air system. Yeah. Well, I just I just want it to be one seamless thing, and I feel like Windows has tried to do it with like Windows 8, and it was you're just always horrible. confused. Yeah, I like hate I was just it. helping my girlfriend. I'm like, you're in the tablet mode, and she's like, no, I'm not. And I'm like, yeah, you are. And it's, I still can't figure it's, it out, and I use yeah. Windows every day. It's frustrating. It's horrible. So I'm looking to Apple as the company that can create this seamless ecosystem. Figure out a way to have it work with your hand or with a mouse and keyboard. Because I want to be able to use Premiere or Photoshop on my iPad. You know what I mean? Like, my iPad has none of the assets on it. And they're gigs and gigs of material. Like, I need to be connected to a network to edit most of the video. Like, this video that we film here, three cameras and 4K, you're not going to throw this footage on your iPad? You could if there was like a jack in the size of the side of the iPad and you could use the iPad as a laptop. That's my point. If there was a jack, but then that defeats the whole purpose of their design element. They're trying to get rid of jacks and buttons. Well, then then Apple needs to figure out a way to wirelessly send data more quickly. I, I'm, I love the idea of a wire-free future. I mean, yeah. that's the dream. We've tried that before. We have tried and that before. none of our network it doesn't solutions work. could ever transfer footage that fast. I know, it doesn't work. And then when you try to transfer stuff from the cameras to the phone with the Wi-Fi and the app, it's slow and it doesn't work and it doesn't connect. It's a nightmare. So yes, there is a dream that this could all be done. I don't see this anytime soon. Yeah, me either. I guess the biggest question I have is when these tablets get really small and you remove all the ports, like. I just still, and this is a question of, is it just me being old school and not evolving? Are these iPads being used for all of these things you want them to be used for? I watch movies, check emails, and surf the web on my iPad. I've never done anything more. And when I see Windows or Microsoft releasing you know, new products, and everyone's got the stylus, and they're, they're doing all these like mock-ups for their jobs, and they have these <laughs> awesome careers, and they're doing graphic effects. Is anyone really doing that? I, I sure am not. That's a great point, and I think about that all the time, too. It's like you see the ad for the iPad, and people, <laughs> it's always the business person, like, sketching on some diagram that looks some, amazing. Yeah, some new thing needs to be adjusted that's probably, like, being worked on by a team of people. Right. And they're like, just move this here, and they go. And <laughs> right. You're like, is anyone ever doing that? Yeah, I've never seen anyone do that. I've seen a lot of people watching a movie on an iPad. Yeah, it's great for that. Yeah, but... It, but you need a pro version to, to do that a little bit better. I know. Like, I feel like a real pro version has Adobe Premiere, the real Adobe Premiere on there. And, like... Yeah, you try to use your finger to do it, it's not going to work. You have to plug in a mouse or, you know, do Bluetooth with the mouse or whatever, and then, boom, you could do it. And the iPad, the new iPad Pro, you can get a pretty big screen. It's 12 point something inches. Yeah. Like, that's the size of a laptop. So if the processor's fast enough to do it, why don't they just allow people to do it? But I have to say, I mean, I, I watch a lot of YouTube videos and reviews and stuff all the time. I know you don't watch as much as me, but there's a lot of people who are like, I sold my laptop and all I use is my iPad now. But if you're looking at the iPad as being the thinnest device with like the greatest design and no ports or anything, how are you ever going to film and take footage and put it into that and then you have to have a mouse to edit? It's just not, it's not designed to do that. There are people on YouTube who, who do it. They have the little like <laughs> USB-C adapter? adapter. They put the memory card in there, move it to the files, open some crap software and then using like their finger or the pencil they're editing their video it seems insane to me yeah. too it seems insane to me too but there are people who do it i just i personally have never met one of those people yeah so that wraps up this video i just want to talk about a few of these things that have been on my mind and argue with patrick live on camera rather than uh when the cameras aren't rolling maybe you guys want to listen in uh, stay tuned because there's a lot of interesting products coming out at the end of each year especially before christmas and uh, if you head over to fstoppers.com, you can see daily free content. We're doing reviews. We're going to really try to stay up to date this holiday season, everything that's happening with prices, new products, reviews, and stuff. So stay tuned there. And if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you subscribe because we have lots more content like this coming out. And last but not least, if you're interested in taking your photography business to the next level, head over to fstoppers.com store. You can check out all of our full-length photography tutorials.